Welcome to NBA Today. It's your girl, Chanae Ogwemeke, here holding it down for Malika Andrews. And I'm also joined by Bobby Marks and Tim McMahon and, of course, the big fella, Kendrick Perkins. Hi, fellas. How are y'all doing? Great. It is okay. great to be here. Perk, how's Houston home? How's Houston? How's back home? Uh, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's, I tell you what, though. It's about to be big fella season in a couple of months. Oh, we already know. <laughs> it's already here. We have so much to discuss today, yeah. but we start with news about another KP, this one, Kristaps Porzingis. The 28-year-old center tweeted yesterday that he will unfortunately miss the upcoming FIBA World Cup where he would have represented Latvia because of a lingering plantar fasciitis issue. That means he has foot problems, y'all. <laughs> okay, producers. Uh, the Celtics confirmed Porzingis will rehab the injury four to six weeks, but is expected to be cleared for training camp. So, Perk, I have a question for you. Is this a big deal? Is this a little deal? Or is this no deal for the Celtics? Oh, this is a huge deal. To, to, to think about what they gave up to get Porzingis in, and this is why I haven't been a big fan of the trade, and I said that I actually need to see it. I need to see Przingis in those pressure moments. I need to see if his body is going to hold up through a long season and through a postseason where they're trying to make a championship run. And so when everybody else was saying, you know, oh, the Celtics, they got Przingis, they're going to be the favorite. Not I, and this is part of the reason because he has an injury history. And when we talk about guys like Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, we need to start uh, mentioning Porzingis. He's right there in the conversation of availability. And so until I see it on the floor, I'm still gonna have these same concerns that everybody's, gonna, everybody's been having since he was drafted by the New York Knicks. Tim, thoughts? Yeah, look, with Kristaps Porzingis, you worry about his health even when he's healthy because durability is always going to be a huge question mark with him. He's had problems with both knees, uh, you know, his back, now, now it's a foot. You know, Rick Carlisle, when KP was with the Mavs, you know, he told me once, he said he might be fragile, but he's not soft. And Carlisle was actually sticking up for him. His point was the problem's not his toughness. It's just that his body betrays him a lot. So this isn't coming back off a of knee surgery, but any time there's a health issue with KP, your antenna goes up and your concern goes yeah, up. Yeah, that, that's understandable. He, he might be fragile, but he's not soft. I like that. That's a bar. Bobby, how concerned should the Celtics be with depth this season, especially hearing this news? I was already concerned about their depth before the Porzingis injury. And when you look at certainly where is Malcolm Brogdon with his health? Remember, he missed that, that game seven against, mm -hmm. um, against Miami here. And when you look at Robert Williams, certainly the wild card. And, and, the, and the big picture of it is they traded Marcus Smart and Grant Williams for Kristaps Porzingis. So addition, subtraction here, and Derek White is now the starting point guard. And when you look at that depth, that is certainly thin. And if Porzingis is out, they're, they're mentioning four to six weeks right before training camp. Um, I've already have concerns, and I've got more concerns certainly right now. Well, last year, the Celtics were number two in both offensive and defensive rating. Perk, are you more concerned about their offense, even though they have had firepower without Porzingis, or do you think their defense is what really they need to get back to? I'm not concerned about their offense because we, we're, playing, we're living in times right now where nobody is really strapping up across the league, okay? But defensively, I worry about their front line. And as Bobby talked about it, we know about Robert Williams, right, and his health, his, his health issues. And then Al Horford, he's not getting younger. He's getting up in age. Hell, he's going to be uh, – able to qualify for his pension in about five or six years. And so when you think about Przingis, we're talking about a Celtic team, again, that is about championship, not getting through an 82-game season, not making it to the conference finals, not having to get a good run and being bounced out in the second round. No, winning a championship. And winning the championship comes with being healthy and being available. And then when you get to the postseason, you think about guys having to lock in defensively. We watched a guy like Michael Porter Jr. accept the challenge for the Denver Nuggets and become a better defender. We watched Jokic become a better defender last postseason. Can the Celtics front line hold up and be better and be what they need when it matters the most? And that's when they're trying to compete 
and hang banner 18. Canada basketball announced today that Jamal Murray will miss the upcoming FIBA Men's Basketball World Cup. Last season, Murray played 65 games and was a major force in driving the Nuggets to the aforementioned first NBA championship in franchise history. Team Canada will open their World Cup group stage against France on Friday, August 25th in Jakarta. Now, Jamal Murray, he stated, quote, when I came into training camp, I wanted to see how my body would respond, respond after a long and demanding season and if I would be physically able to compete at the highest level required for the World Cup. But I have made the decision to not participate in the tournament. It's still a dream of mine to represent Canada at the Olympics, and I will support the team every step of the way as they pursue this goal. Now, obviously, certain talents like Jamal are you know, Olympic caliber. But Tim, what do you make of this decision? Honestly, I, I was surprised that it took him this long. I mean, Joker ruled out playing in the World Cup uh, pretty much right after the season, and especially for Murray. He missed a year and a half. He came back, not only played a full season, but, you know, he's playing well into June at the highest level of his career, heavy minutes to help them win that championship. So to, to go right into the World Cup uh, would have been surprising. I think the, the silver lining here is he did go through a camp with Canada. As he said, he wants to play in the Olympics. That at least let him establish some kind of chemistry, some kind of rapport with that group. And look, Canada is still loaded. They're still going to throw out a starting lineup that's got, you know, a nine figures of NBA salary uh, out there on the floor. They should be able to qualify for the Olympics for the first time in a long time. Then Hopefully for him, he can join that group next year as they're heading to Paris. And this is quite normal, right, for guys of his caliber, this Olympic-level talent, to be able to exercise his option to play in the World Cup or not, right, knowing that you're likely to be on the Olympics? Yeah, no, no question about it. And I also wonder if seeing his Nuggets teammate, Vlako Chanchar, unfortunately, he saw the, the risk of playing in FIBA basketball, you know, goes up for a dunk in an in a exhibition game for Slovenia, Paris is ACL. I, I wonder if Jamal Murray looked at that situation and said, as much as I want to play this summer, it's just the smart thing uh, to put the, the Canada squad on hold. Yeah, and also let's dive into, you know, what else he could have looked into because, Bobby, how do you think this upcoming contract extension might have also played into this decision? I, I think it has to, and I think certainly we had Tim mentioned that playing deep into the season w played was probably the more significant role, but Murray has two years left on his contract. He's eligible for an extension up until October 23rd for three years, $144 million. If he earns All-NBA this upcoming season, that could increase to five years, $300 million plus. And for a player that missed the 2021-22 season with that injury, I don't think you can risk going out, and I certainly respect him going to training camp to play for Canada, but I think what's out there in the future of his future earnings here is certainly certainly a priority. And how do you see Denver really positioning themselves to hopefully repeat this up upcoming NBA season? Well, there's a lot of questions, right? You lose Bruce Brown and you lose Jeff Green, and now you're relying on your bench, well, certainly with Christian Brown and some of your younger players. You brought back Reggie Jackson, but that bench is unproven. Mm -hmm. Peyton Watson, who they drafted a year ago, Julian Strouther, who they drafted, they're going to we certainly rely on, on youth here, and I think that's where the depth comes in where you can't, you know, a Jamal Murray injury would certainly, that would knock them out of repeating next year. And speaking of that, you cover the West quite proficiently. Where do you see the Nuggets stacking up against the increased parity with a lot of talent aggregating in the Western Conference this year? They're still the team to beat. I mean, they, it's not like they've struggled to win this championship. Let's be honest, the Denver Nuggets cruised through the playoffs. They swept the Lakers in the West Finals. Yes, they have some depth issues. Yes, they will be relying on some young guys who I think, you know, they've got a pretty proven track record as far as being able to scout and develop talent. That's what they're counting on for their bench. But as long as they've got Joker, Jamal Murray, and that starting five healthy, the Nuggets are the clear favorites in the Western Conference. Perk, you heard that? I know you love whoa, the Lakers. Whoa. Are the Nuggets the clear whoa. favorites? <laughs> no, no, they're not. And it's hard as hell to, to uh, re repeat when you talk about winning the NBA championship, one, you want to try to make sure that you bring everybody back that that actually was part of that championship team. And we know two people for sure that's not coming back is Jeff Green and Bruce Brown that played a significant role for the Denver Nuggets in winning the championship. But to talk about Jamal Murray a little further, when you think about playing into the and playing into June, okay, and then all of a sudden you didn't 
Teams that didn't make the playoffs, Jamal Murray didn't already play two and a half more months of basketball than those guys. And then now, all teams, majority teams, report back to training camp right after Labor Day. So the season is right around the corner. Again, we can look at examples, guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton. We remember when they when when they won the championship, it was what a week or two. They hopped right on the on the private jet and went met uh, Team USA and went play for and went won the gold medal. And we remember how they came back the uh, following season. They were tired, their bodies were breaking down. It's a huge adjustment. But again, pump your brakes for a second because <laughs> the Phoenix Suns go, gonna have something to say about it. This emerging young team and the, the Sacramento Kings are coming and the Los Angeles Lakers, they get a full training camp up under their belt with a healthy Anthony Davis and I am him, Austin Reeves. I'm not <laughs> just sitting up here saying that the, De the Denver Nuggets are the clear-cut favorite. Okay, we I'm will. not going to do that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.